Hey everyone, and welcome to this special Talking Song episode where we have Neil with us. Neil, welcome. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so uh, a lot of you probably know Neil from, you know, the, the, a lot of support, a lot of comments, including, I, I will never forget uh, when you commented on like how we don't, you know, we say we fall asleep. We don't jump to sleep. It's like we letting go is kind of the key, but many, many other comments, many, many other pieces of support from you, Neil. So we're going to talk about your journey today, but a little bit different here. We both watched that ex excellent documentary, The Last Dance, about like Michael Jordan and the Bulls. And we I think we both saw some, so many parallels to like mindfulness, insomnia, all these things. So uh, we're both going to like read... Uh, a couple of quotes from this excellent book and uh, have that as a kind of a backdrop. Right. <laughs> Sounds good? Uh, great, of course. Perfect. Well, um, let me actually pick my, probably my favorite. There were so many good things in the book, by the way. Anyone who is interested in mindfulness and sports, get this book, Sacred Hoops by Phil Jackson. It's a great one, but here it is. So let me read this one. Uh, this is from page 50. If you are concentrated on your breathing, and by the way, this is like, you know, he's exploring mindfulness. He, he actually knows quite a lot of it at this stage, but that's kind of a little backdrop there. So if you're concentrated on your breathing, you will forget yourself. And if you forget yourself, you will be concentrated on your breathing. As a basketball player, this made a lot of sense to me. I knew from experience that I was far more effective when my mind was clear and I wasn't playing with an agenda of some kind, like scoring a certain number of points or showing up uh, one of my opponents. The more skilled I became at watching my thoughts in Zen practice, the more focused I became as a player. I also developed an intimate knowledge of my mental processes on the basketball court. My thoughts took many forms. There was pure self-interest. When I get the ball, I'm going for the hoop, no matter what. Selfless self-interest. When I get the ball, I'm gonna pass it to Bradley, no matter what. There was anger. That effing Will Chamberlain, next time he's dead meat. And fear, that effing Will Chamberlain, next time I'll let Willis handle him. There was self-praise, that was cool, do it again. And more likely in my case, self-blame. What's wrong with you, Phil? A sixth grader could make that shot. The litany was endless. However, the simple act of becoming mindful of the frenzied parade of thoughts paradoxically began to quiet my mind down. This I thought was so powerful. Amazing, right? amazing, yeah, amazing. And uh, just before, like, I'll let you comment on this, perhaps, like, just for everybody tuning in here. I think this is so amazing. Like, just and 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 so you can clearly see how he had all these thoughts. And this was around basketball, but we all recognize having all these frenzied thoughts that should pop, 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 up. But the magic is that when the simple, so he says, the simple act of becoming aware of those thoughts, paying attention to them. And they start kind of evaporate. They start like not becoming so like they become fleeting again. That was a great quote. Do you remember that one? Of course, of course. I think first you'll have to excuse me because English is not my mother tongue language. So uh, I'll do my best. But you know what I learned. I mean, I mean, I thought about before the book, but by you know reading the book is is since you cannot control your thoughts. You know, thoughts, we have, I don't know, like 6,000, 7,000 thoughts a day and you cannot, you not can control them. But what you can do, a thing that I, you know, uh, uh, practice, what you can do is you can change your relationship with your thoughts, which means, you know, your brain is there, it's going to think whatever thoughts. The, the thing is how you look at it, how you, uh, how you choose to respond to these thoughts. I learned it through insomnia, but... He's, he learned it through basketball, which is, you know, Phil Jackson was the best coach ever. And, and really being engaged in what you do and not, you know, doing the thing, but not thinking about the thing, you know? Uh, and it's so, uh, um, you can take so much from it to sleep. So it's, yeah, great quote. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, okay, we, we, can, we can talk about that for a whole hour, but uh, let's, right. let's move ahead and talk about what what uh, what did you what quote did you pick to to start okay. with? So when we start when we when you came came up with the idea to start with the quotes, I was at like page one forty, so <laughs> I didn't read the whole book from the beginning. But um, uh, one of them, I think it's page one uh, one fifty two. At one fifty two, marked it here because I have like ten quotes. At one fifty two, he says. Um, 
uh, every leader has weaknesses and screws up uh, some of the time, an effective leader uh, learn to admit it. In coaching the Bulls, the Chicago Bulls, yeah, I try to stay in touch with the same beginner's mind. I learn uh, to cultivate in Zen practice. And this is the one, as long as I know I don't know, chances are I won't do too much harm. Okay? And, you know, when it comes to sleep, um, uh, you don't have to know anything about sleep in order to sleep. As much as you research about it, right? All you do is just, you know, you make your insomnia worse because, because sleep is natural. You know, he, he was talking about basketball, but we're, we're trying to take it to sleep and it's natural, okay? If, as more as you dwell on sleep, when you think about the bad night that you had, the chances that you're gonna have another night like that, because you're you're engaged, you're you're not you're not observing your thoughts, but you, you think that you are your thought, right? That your thoughts are real. That and and I just love this quote. So. Yeah, that, that was a super powerful one. Very very cool. Okay, so um, with that said, I think let's let's go over your journey, Neil. So I know actually I'm. Um, quite curious myself because we've interacted somewhat but i don't really have an idea what's happened except from little little pieces here and there so right. so tell us like the whole the whole story really okay um well my insomnia stories started about i think it was 21 or 22 years ago uh, i was 18 and since i'm living in israel uh, when we get to the age of 18 we must by law join the army i don't even know but I had to join the IDF uh, uh, for three years, uh, at least. You can uh, move on there. And when I, when I joined the army, I remember, the, I think it was the first night they sent us to this base for like one night before they transfer us with a bus to our basic trainings. And I'm, I'm one of these, it's, I think it's important to understand, to understand that I'm like what you call an A-type. Right, I want to do everything perfectly, do the maximum I can. I said, you know, if I have three years to spend in the army, I don't want to just, I don't know, make coffee or do whatever. I, I want to be in, you know, in combat. I want to do the best that I can in every single thing that I do. And 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 then I remember that the first night uh, before they even sent us to our unit, I was I was uh, uh, like in an urban unit. You know, jumping from airplanes and so on. So be before then, the first night I didn't sleep at all. It was the first night in the army. I didn't sleep at all. A new soldier. I didn't know anyone. They put us like in a tent of like 12 or 15 guys. I didn't know any of them. And um, um, and I didn't think about it actually. The first night because, you know, you're excited. It's it's pretty normal. I think it was weird if I, if I actually some of them fell asleep. I don't even know how. You know, they put uniforms on you. You don't have your identity, you're a number now. And you're like, how can you sleep? Anyhow, I didn't sleep the whole night, but I didn't think about it. And, and uh, then they sent us to basic trainings and so on for like six months. And in the first week, um, it was the first time, you know, that, you know, it's the army, so you have rules. So you eat in a certain time and you have um, um, whatever you do there. But when it came to sleep, they gave us six hours to sleep every single day, like in 24 hours, you had six hours to sleep. And it's the first time I ever heard that there's a certain amount of sleep that the person should have. Before that, I didn't even know. If I would sleep four hours, three hours, didn't sleep at all, slept eight hours, it was, I didn't think about it. I mean, if I felt tired, I was tired. If I didn't feel tired, I wasn't tired. That's it, I, I never, I never you know, looked back at the night and said, oh, I'm tired because I slept only three hours. So we had six hours to sleep. And before this six hour, we received another one hour, you know, take a shower, call whoever you like, just one hour for yourself uh, to take your time before you go to sleep to relax a little bit. You know, uh, running and shooting all day, it's not like you cannot fall asleep immediately, but everybody was so exhausted. And I remember that I had a, a, a one phone call with my ex-girlfriend, which she was my first love, you know, for like, four years or so, three or four years since the age of 15, the biggest love. And we broke up on this uh, conversation because I was far away and it was pretty hard and so on. And I remember going back, you know, and then I had six hours to sleep. And actually I couldn't, 
I, I would I just I would just lying there and nothing happened. I, I waited and waited and I didn't fall asleep and I looked at the clock and it was you know midnight and then one o'clock. Okay, it looks like we had some connection issues there. <sighs> what can we do? Okay, we're back and it was at this moment. So we, we heard you were going to, um, uh, oh no, it happens again. What, what are you gonna do? Okay. Okay, now we're recording again. <laughs> we stopped recording at this like dramatic moment. You're calling your girlfriend and you right. broke up and it would happen. Okay, so I stayed up all night and uh, around four o'clock in the morning, it was so raining and everybody woke up and actually I felt, I felt good because I wasn't alone. You know, the, the, the thing with insomnia is it's night, you're out there all by yourself. Everybody's sleeping, which makes it feel much worse because you see that everybody sleeps. And you know that it's it's not an ability, you know, you know, you sleep since you were born. And all of a sudden I found, you know, and, and, and then actually um, I started to think about it. You know, we were very busy all day doing a lot of things, you know, it's an army, but still it was always all my, why didn't I sleep all night? I mean, okay, so I had a, you know, a, a, a bad, you know, a bad conversation with my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, I didn't know. But, but okay, so you took, let's say it would take you one hour, two hours, three hours to fall asleep, but I, I didn't sleep at all. And I thought about it all day. And actually the next night I couldn't fall asleep as well. And, and you know, and, and, and then month after, it was like month that I think that once in like three, four days, I slept like one or two hours. So if you guys think that your insomnia is bad, <laughs> this is bad insomnia, right? And you have to do, it's not just like going to work every day. You have to run for like, I don't know, 12 hours, shoot with a gun, do crazy stuff without any sleep. And one thing that I learned actually, I was very, very fatigued. I felt the anxiety all day because I thought about my nights and I wanted, did, I wanted to do everything so good, to be perfect at anything that I do to be. And, um, and it was, it wasn't the, actually the uh, like the mental side of it was a bit hard because when you don't sleep naturally you're tired, and it's not fun to be tired, but and you're very fatigued and you you can feel the anxiety you can you know you can really feel it, but the thing is that I I functioned uh, uh, even better than other soldiers soldiers that had sleep at night which means. Um, I never had any problem functioning, even being awake for three or four days, which was very weird because, you know, when you think of it, we all think that if we don't sleep, we cannot do anything. Um, sleeping was a problem, but when morning came up and I had to do things, you know, nobody asked you, you have to do that, you get, uh, and you do sports all day and so on. And I just did it for, you know, for, for month and month. And, um, and actually one time, uh, my commander, came, I, I, you know, I told him, listen, I want, I want to join, I want to do everything with everyone, but I cannot fall asleep. What should I do? So they told me, uh, you know, instead of six hours, after two weeks, we started to get eight hours, not because of, not because of the fact that we got eight hours, but we, because we had two hours to guard. So let's say you go to sleep and after one or two hours, uh, uh, you know, the other soldier wakes you up, you go for two, two hours to guard. So you get six hours and two hours in the middle of the night for you know, guarding the base. And they told me, listen, because of your sleeping problem, you will be either the first one or the last one to guard. So you'll, you'll get a whole eight hours, okay? And then, and then it's gonna, you know, this is your solution because even, even if it's gonna take you one or two hours to sleep, you'll sleep for six or seven hours, as you probably know. And now I know why. I couldn't sleep uh, and it was worse because I had more time being awake in bed and my anxiety was just like, they gave me eight hours. How come I'm, I'm in bed for three or four hours, cannot fall asleep, checking the time all the time, thinking about it. And uh, my insomnia got worse and then worse. And then actually they sent me to a sleeping lab uh, for like two weeks uh, with this kind of watch on my arm to check how many hours I'm sleeping and how many hours I'm awake. And what they found that I have, they call it a late 
sleep syndrome, maybe? A delayed okay. sleep phase syndrome, yeah. Delayed, exactly, exactly. Uh, which I think till today, it's like, it takes me, uh, I need like 19 or 20 hours to be awake to produce six hours. So the 24 hours for me be, it becomes 26 hours. But today I know that, you know, back then, you know, I fall asleep at 2 a.m. And then the night after I would be sleeping at like 4 a.m. So if, so it, it, it was kind of uh, uh, interesting, but um, my insomnia got, you know, worse. And actually after one year and one year and a half, I remember just telling him, listen, uh, uh, I was in a very bad mental situation and I got off the army. I just went back home <laughs> and I couldn't sleep at home in my own bed, in my own room where I grew up which was, I thought this is gonna be, you know, my safe place. You know, being in the desert, uh, hot all day, cold every night, very cold at night. When I came back to my room and couldn't sleep, it was the worst. And I was just, I was in a very, very bad shape. I felt like, you know, I don't, I don't wanna live anymore. I don't, you know, I don't know, know what I'm living for. If I cannot sleep, why can everyone sleep? What should I do? Start looking for solutions, start researching. And this went on and off for I would say 20 years, two decades, which is a long time. Uh, uh, you know, when, when I stopped thinking about it, I could sleep better and with good times. And then if I missed one night of sleep, I started thinking about it. And it's always the fear. It's always the fear that comes back and, you know, like nodding in your head and checking, okay, do you still remember me? You still remember what happened back there? And then you experience the same anxiety, the same feelings actually. And until, um, and I, I spend, I think, hundreds of thousands of dollars going to so many people that nobody knew nothing about sleep, trying to find a solution. And they all told me, you know, uh, sleep is not the problem, which it's partly correct. Sleep is not the problem. The problem is what happens when you're awake. You don't have a sleeping problem. Uh, but no one really knew what to do about it because they started to check what happened when I was a child and my relationship with my parents and with my friends, which is basically natural. And I did, uh, what's it called? NLP, right? Uh, you know NLP? Oh, which one is that? I have heard yeah. about that, but I... Uh, nervous, I don't remember. You can Some nerve it. conduction, uh, some nerve studies. Yeah. There. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and so many uh, treatments and none of them was directly uh, about sleep. And then I found your channel, I, I think it was two years ago uh, after a, a stretch of a few bad nights, you know, sitting with myself searching. And then I found you in YouTube. And it was the first time in my life that I ever had anyone actually like saying, how do you call it? Expressing. To my, expressing exactly what I feel, what I'm going through. Uh, after 20 years, you know, that I didn't know what to do. Uh, first time that I heard that and I looked at it and I said, I'm, uh, first of all, you know, I took uh, like a, a very deep breath because of the feeling that I'm not alone. You know, I, I thought that my insomnia is unique. Nobody has such kind of insomnia. And, and, and I started to watch video after, I, I think at a certain point, I told you that I watched all of them like four times. Uh, and then I found you and I saw Martin, Martin Reed on his videos as well. And, and Michael, and, and I started to listen to it and it all you know, made sense. Um, and at the same time, actually, one of the people that I went to, to, to get a treatment was, was a guy, a spiritual guy that he said, listen, I know nothing about insomnia, but I can teach you something about yourself. And I said, what do you mean? I can't sleep, help me. He said, listen, forget, just let's forget about sleep. I wanna talk, this is how I got to, uh, uh, to understand that I'm not my brain and not my heart. And there is a Zen in the middle and so on, which we're gonna talk about it because we're here to talk mindfulness a little bit as well. So, uh, I mean, this is my insomnia. And every time, you know, I went uh, away somewhere, I could, it took me like one or two nights until I could fall asleep and so on. 20 years of suffer, 20 years of suffer. And nowadays uh, I would say that it's like after 20 years, you know, it's always, as you once said, it's always on my radar. You know, the fear is always somewhere there, but 
I change my relations with, with my thoughts. And, and when you change your relation with your thoughts, you change your relations with your emotions since thoughts create emotions. And, and then you can you know, observe them. And, and, but it takes a lot of practice because your brain is something that you can, um, I don't have the word, but um, when you practice meditation and mindfulness, you can, you know, you can take some distance from your thoughts and look at them and sometimes even laugh at yourself, you know, not take life so seriously. And with time, I understood that um, it, it's going to sound so bad to people that have insomnia, but you don't really need to sleep. I know it sounds bad. Okay. It sounds like, well, what do you mean? I can't sleep. I want to sleep. But uh, if you will, you know, the, the two biggest fears that I had was ones that it's going to harm me physically, uh, harm my, you know, uh, uh, my health. And the other one was that I won't be able to function at work. Now, I functioned for like a year uh, uh, doing stuff that are, you know, playing Rambo uh, without being able to sleep. Okay, without being able, without sleeping. And so trust me. I mean, it's not fun being tired, but you can do anything. Really, you can do any. If I did anything, you all can do anything. And the other thing is, um, as you always say, you know, uh, there is not even one research that shows that insomnia causes any health issues. And it's true. I'm, I'm healthy. Okay, I miss like three years of sleep, <laughs> and I'm healthy. And today, you know, most of the time I sleep well. But even if I don't, I don't mind because, because the anxiety is like when it comes up, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at it and I said, listen, you've been here so many times and nothing happened. So, so why, you know, if we believe in statistics, why would it be the first time that something will happen if anything didn't happen so far? So this is like, of course, it's much longer, but. Maybe. No, that was, that was amazing. It was really, really powerful. And and actually, if you could, it was, I remember you talked to me about this, actually, this, uh, this episode. So this happened, this uh, sort of like guru or spiritual teacher, um, was, was that your segue into kind of mindfulness or was it, had I, had I, I think I didn't talk about it so much at the time. So what was that? And just tell us uh, about that, how you ended up with that guru and, and what, uh, what that first experience was like and what you learned. Okay, I, I talked to my, uh, when, when I had, uh, I went through a phase of uh, insomnia and I talked to my cousin and I told her, listen, I can't sleep. You know, she's like a good friend of mine. And she told me, listen, I had the same thing. I couldn't fall asleep. Uh, she didn't suffer for 20 years for like two nights. She said, listen, I was lying in bed all night and didn't sleep. And I said, what did you do? And she said, listen, I want to give you a, a phone number of someone and just go there. And I went to meet this guy. It was the first time I ever saw him. You know, I didn't know who he was, but I tried everything. And you know, when you have insomnia, you try everything. Okay, I tried it. And after a, a night of no sleep, uh, you know, I had either night, when I had went through the presence of insomnia, it was either uh, a night without any sleep or with what you call a surrender sleep. When you give up on the struggle at five, six o'clock in the morning and then you like sleep for two hours. But anyhow, we might, actually a few quotes for that but we're going to talk about it later i went for this guy and it was the first time i saw him never saw me before and he hugged me like my mother never hugged me okay and he just looked into my eyes smiling so relaxed and i told him uh Ooh, what's going on who are you <laughs> you know and he said sit down what do you want to drink and we started to talk and it was the first time that uh, nobody's talking uh, to my brain, but he's talking to me. And it was the first time that I, I understood that I am not my thoughts, okay? Uh, um, you know, we talked about so many things um, uh, that he said, you have to understand the whole machinery of, of human being, okay? What is going on inside? Uh, after you understand it, it's going to be much easier for you to, uh, um, uh, you know, life will be much easier for you, actually. Life is going to be much easier because when you're educated, just like with sleep, when you're educated and you understand how, uh, how we function, we all as humans, uh, it's much easier for you to achieve what you want to achieve. And, 
we started to talk about uh, thoughts and about emotions and you know my head we call it my head or my brain or my mind whatever and then my heart which is you know the, the ra rational side and the emotional side there was like this blue pillow and red pillow the blue pillow was my head and the red pillow was uh, 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 my emotion and um, and and then he said you are in the middle which this is Zen actually the middle which you're not your thoughts and you're not your emotions and um, and, and I started to learn you, you know it takes practice and you need a lot of patience because we have our you know automatics since we're, we're kids we especially we in the Western world we are um, trained to to achieve which is great but your head wants to achieve it's not you we're trained to achieve we're trained to to um, to be able to sleep you know it's it's an achievement okay everybody can do that you have to do it as well you know to be uh, uh, to be first first place at anything that you do uh, to be the best to be to get the best grades you know in school and then in college university whatever to be the best soldier to be the best to be the best father to be the best and 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 what actually happens is you're not accepting life, but you are living in your thoughts. You're living in, in, in something that has some kind of a distance from where you really are. And in this space between who you are and who you think you are, which is your thoughts, this is where anxiety, fears, this is where they, this is the space. I hope I'm- Now you're making sense, yeah. Okay, this is the space where anxiety and fears come into and then, affects your thoughts and then your emotions. You know, because our head is like, think about someone sitting in a radio station and always, uh, uh, you know, saying the same things. You know, mantra, always saying the same thing. Now our brain, um, from our, what I learned and experience, is always uh, uh, have, will usually have bad thoughts. Why? Because, because the 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 uh, the job his job is is he's functioning for um, uh, you know trouble shootouts to the whole like you have a window he's trying to when you have a problem the brain has to solve it he's here to survive okay he's not here to make you feel good and if you want to prove it to yourself you know what let's take an example let's say I'm telling you a, a joke but a really good one. Right, and you're gonna laugh, okay? You're gonna laugh, it's gonna be so funny. Let's say I'm telling you the same joke again. You might laugh, but a bit less. And I'm telling you the same joke again and again, at a certain point, you're gonna tell me, listen, okay, I got it, okay, funny, let's go on. If I'm gonna tell you something that is bad, okay? Something that, you know, uh, um, produce anxiety, you didn't sleep last night, okay? You won't be able to sleep anymore, whatever, uh, or any other bad thought, you're gonna dwell on it and think the same thought again and again and again and feel bad about it. How come we don't think the good thoughts again and again and again, and only the bad thoughts, okay? Because our brain is here to solve problems. If it's not a problem, he said, this, this is not, it's a whole other section. It's not in my section. I'm not supposed to deal with it, okay? Take it somewhere else. <laughs> I'm not, if there's something bad, call me, okay? If it's good, it's, it's not me, right? And if our emotions are created by our thoughts, if you always think bad thoughts, you will feel bad, right? So this is like uh, the circle. And I learned through a lot of through meditation, which is like the space between the thoughts to take myself far away, not far away, but I would say to observe my thoughts and change my relation with my thoughts. And by that, with my emotions, and control this by not trying to control this. Exactly, exactly. When, when you accept, when you accept life as, as it is, and you know, uh, uh, the thing with meditation, what takes you back, you know, because I think we talked about it a bit, but uh, um, one of the mails that I wrote you, that uh, um, I'm gonna sound like Osho a little bit, but anyhow, people always, you know, our mind is never here. Our mind is either, about what's going to happen next in the next minute, next 10 minutes tomorrow, or what happened yesterday, okay? Uh, uh, yesterday, I don't know, uh, my spouse told me this and that, my best friend, my this, whatever happened in work, and you actually emotionally live it because 
thoughts create emotions. And you think about what happened yesterday. And if you think about my, what might happen tomorrow, because you never know. You, you, nobody ever been in tomorrow. Nobody, right? <laughs> nobody ever been in tomorrow. You always here and now. There, all we always have is the present moment. When, you, when you're in bed and you cannot fall asleep and you're thinking about the presentation that you have tomorrow at work, okay? It has nothing to do with reality. Because if you think about it, most of the time when you get to the presentation with zero hours of sleep, you will do good because you, tr because you are who you are. When you get it, you'll just be a little bit tired and you do what you had to do because you know how to do that. This is why you were hired for, right? You know what to do and you will do it. And if you'll do it, you'll probably sleep better the next night because you know, the, or not, but anyhow, because uh, the fear will uh, reduce right, a little bit. So back to the, to the uh, uh, thing with the thoughts and emotions, you know, uh, uh, yesterday, if, if you realize that, that yesterday is no more and tomorrow is not yet, and they both, you know, yesterday is memories and tomorrow is imaginations, which both in a way are your imagination. If you leave your imagination, it's insanity. Right, it, it, it's, ins it's insane because you don't live with life itself. What you're supposed to live is your senses, what you smell, what you feel. If I'll, if I'll punch you in the face, you cannot think about anything but the punch you just got in your face, right? This is being present. If you smell a flower that smells good, you're here. If you're going into a restaurant with a friend and the friend is telling you a story and you start to imagine what your friend is telling you, Either it happened yesterday or what might happen tomorrow. You leave the story and then the dish, you know, the meal is coming to your table. You smell it, you taste it. Now you got into the restaurant. Before that, you were in your head somewhere else, okay? And, and when it comes to sleep, it really helped me because, because all these thoughts that I had about it, that even though that I knew at a certain point that were not true, I still feel the anxiety and a lot of people, you know, I heard on your channel and, and, and people that talked to me told me, how can you not think about sleep when you didn't sleep for three days? It's impossible. I say, you're right. I don't tell, you know, you cannot control your th thoughts, but you can, you can change your relationship with your thoughts. Okay. Um, uh, is this the first time you ever that you didn't sleep? You have insomnia? No, it happened a month ago, two months ago. You're still alive. You're talking to me, right? So let's be real. Right now you're talking to me and you can explain how bad you feel with your insomnia. Your mind is clear. Everything's fine, okay? It's not that bad not to sleep, okay? Live with what is happening right now. And when you're at night and you cannot sleep, the idea is to accept it because nothing you will do will make you sleep at the moment this, this, this as we said this is life this is what is going on right now now you can choose to feel bad about it or feel good about it and when you practice uh mindfulness then you really it's much easier to accept uh, the Which, present moment absolutely it goes back to like it kind of segues perfectly to like the quote i had there where uh you know phil jackson was talking about right. And just being aware of the thoughts and um, not automatically thinking that they are you and following them, that then they just kind of like start fading away. But I, now I'm getting curious here, like uh, on your end, do you like, do you have like a more formal meditation practice every day or yeah. mm -hmm. what do you do? Actually, I, uh, one of the things I learned to accept with insomnia is I never, I was never one of these people waking up at six or seven o'clock in the morning because I'm a night person. I love night. So I always say, you know, why do I have to change it? Why do I have to go to sleep at midnight and, and wake up at six, seven o'clock in the morning? If I prefer to be up, listen, all my, uh, I, trained, I went through university, first degree, second degree and so on, doing everything at night. You know, I took my classes in the afternoon and I was studying at the five o'clock in the morning. For like 15 years, I went to sleep at six o'clock in the morning and woke up at noon or one o'clock in the afternoon. And hey, I'm alive, I'm talking, I'm okay, I'm, I'm still here. Which means that um, it was part of, you know, accepting who I am, okay? This is who I am. It makes, you know, Janis Joplin once said, yeah, you know, you got it, if it makes you feel good, right? 
if you do something and it makes you feel good, this is, don't think about it. This is it. Because life is about feeling good. If you do something at this present moment and it makes you feel good, that's it. If, if, you, if you try to force sleep because everybody goes to sleep at one o'clock, midnight, 11 o'clock, whatever, uh, uh, and you try to be something that you're not, anxiety will find a space between what you think that you should be to what you are, okay? And, and you know, uh, and, and back to your question, sorry, when you meditate, I'm meditating, so let's say I'm waking up at like, and my daughter is like me, so it's, it's much easier. And we have a lockdown here in Israel because of COVID-19 uh, right now for like uh, three weeks, even though it doesn't help anyhow. Uh, so no kindergarten, so she's almost five. And uh, she's a night person like me. She wakes up at like nine, 9.30. Uh, she likes to go to sleep uh, uh, late and, and who cares? You know, if it's good for you, good for me, if it works for you, you know, you have one life. You're born and then at a certain point we die. And then in the middle, if you spend this time to feel bad and, you know, uh, thinking all the time, thinking all the time, instead of living life, life is what is happening. And when I meditate, uh, so back to your question, sorry, I'm, I'm, let's say I walk up, you know, I take, um, you know, brushing my teeth, take the dog for a walk. And then, you know, making a coffee, I have like uh, this garden in my house and um, I sit outside uh, on the, I have like this swing or whatever. And, and I just sit there uh, for uh, 15 minutes and I choose, what I choose to do is not to do, which means I choose to do nothing. Being still like, like you know, think about a mountain, you know, a mountain is there in the winter, the snow is coming and you know everything and it's cold and in, in the summer you can see trees and butterflies. The mountain doesn't move anywhere, okay? And what I'm trying to do is to be this mountain. I took mountain as an example, you can take any other example. And just, you know, I take the position that, that, will, that is very convenient for me that I can stand, you know, sit, sit still for like 15 or 20 minutes. I decide the time I'm putting on a timer. I have this app of, uh, Actually, I took the re recommendation for the app from, what was his name? Oh, Trevor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Inside Timer, I think it's called, I don't remember. And I put this gong and I tell myself, until you hear the gong, okay, you're meditating. Which, and then the thing with meditation, that it, first of all, it, it, it takes a lot of practice. If you start meditating for the first, second, third time, and it... it, it and uh, you cannot, after five, four minutes, you can't take it anymore. You just have to go and do something. It's part of the process. You know, after a certain time, after five minutes, you're going you, you're gonna to feel like you don't want to move. You don't want to go anywhere because the quietness that you feel when you're far from your thoughts and therefore from your emotions. I think meditation is supposed to be the space between your thoughts. So it takes your thoughts and therefore your uh, emotions you know, reduce them. So you feel them in a very, very low, uh, you know, like much lower. And then, and then you just feel the, I, I always say, you know, it's not about a religious, but this is where God is, you know, it, it, this is, and it's something that you just have to be there. It's not even to feel it because it's not a feeling. It's quiet. And, absolutely. And, you know, absolutely. I, I just want to jump in real quick and, and just share that. You know, I I started, I think it just actually about the time that Trevor was on here and talked about mm -hmm. mindfulness, about the time I was like, I should do this myself, you know? And I started with like literally three minutes, like three minutes every day, just sitting. And and then and then after a while that felt really good. So like five, five, now I'm doing like like you, about 15 minutes or 20 minutes every day. And here's the confusing part that in the beginning, you know, or a couple of things. Number one was like, I realized I had so much of these like dualistic thoughts in my brain, good, bad. You should do this. You shouldn't do that. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And like, like, why do I have this subscribers? How was my, how was my, all these things were going on. I didn't even realize it. And, and a lot of them were kind of judgmental and like not really nice thoughts, you know? Right. And that's like, you learn. And, and then, so that was a big realization. Like all this stuff is going on in there that you often aren't even aware of. That was number one. But number two was that, 
it takes, you know, you think that meditation is about like just being really calm and serene. And that becomes kind of the side effect when you focus, right? And that's the weird thing. I have to really focus on my thoughts. Like I really try to catch them, like sit there and like, when's the next thought? And when I, and the more I focused on kind of trying to catch the thought as it was arising, then they just become super fleeting. And then with, the, with time, you don't have to necessarily focus that hard. But in the beginning, I had to really focus like to, to, so, to and it's so bizarre. You have to really focus on your thoughts for them to start becoming fleeting. But did you have a kind of similar experience? And actually, yeah, well, the experience that I had is, is something that this kind of guru, this guy told me that might happen. He, he told me, listen, your, your head and your heart, you're like your thoughts and your emotions will try to take you to other places all the time. Yeah. They, they, your head is going to tell you, what are you doing? You're just sitting here for five minutes doing nothing. It's a waste of time. It's boring. Okay. Get up. Okay. You're not a spiritual guy. You're very, you know, what are you doing? And he said, okay, the, it's a thought observe it you choose okay not doing anything is, 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 is what you do is not doing okay do not doing don't do you choose i'm i'm the landlord here i'm i'm the owner of this place of this of me and i choose not to react for the next 15 minutes it doesn't matter what my daughter is calling me the dog is barking i hear the laundry machine okay i have a, something that oh i i i, I forgot it doesn't matter what happened. You choose not to react. And when times goes by and your these thoughts are coming and these emotions and so on, and you choose not to react to them, this is where quiet, you know, this is how you become quiet because you choose to be uh, the master of yourself. You choose not to react to whatever happens. And why did it help me with insomnia actually is because I chose after a bad night or no, no sleep at all, I chose not to react. I told myself, you know, uh, it happened. I feel the anxiety. It is what it is. Go by your day and do whatever because, because insomnia is like, you know, like, like a playground bully. It will always try to tell you, you know, uh, you still there? Can you hear me? Okay, you know, uh, 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 you remember what happened last night? Remember that you check at 4.15 and then it was 4.20 and then 4.22 and then you couldn't sleep and then you think you're not going to sleep and then it was five o'clock in the morning and then you saw the sun goes up and then you say, well, I have like, I have to take the, my, my daughter to the kindergarten and go to work, bah, 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 you know, all the time. When you meditate, you choose, these thoughts are coming in the, in the first five minutes, they just come all the time. You just, I'm just, you know, observing them and I tell them, I, I know, you know, it just, once you said lines in your head, I think it was, right? Okay, it's a thought. Now, what do you want to do with this thought? Okay, do you want to engage with this thought? Do you want to, okay, you want to be this thought? Is this a good thought? No, so why do you want to be this thought, right? Let it be, okay? Just let it be. It's, it's like the Beatles said, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> being a poet here. So, um, uh, you know, this thought is not you. If, if you had another thought, if you had a good thought, would you be happy? Let's say you slept two hours tonight and then all of a sudden you would receive the best news in the world. How would you feel? So I say, if you feel bad about this and good about that, you are, you are, you are your thoughts still. You didn't take enough distance from your thoughts. This is why very successful people in life are very calm, even though they, they're gonna tell them, listen, you just made 10, uh, $10 million yesterday. I'm gonna tell you, okay, what is the next mission? He's calm about it because he's not, he's not identified, right? right? With the thought, with the feeling, okay? He understand that it's there, but it's not, it, it's part of you. It, it's there, but you can observe it. I hope it was. Absolutely, no, it makes total sense. Wow, and so, Actually, I didn't, I didn't, I thought, you know, again, I'm, uh, I'm very, very, you know, extra happy, like now, because I, I realized that I, I thought somehow that when you found the YouTube channel, you had like, you had already started your journey, you were already doing, doing no. better, but actually that became it, that was a big starting point. Right, yeah, 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 when, when I found the channel, I, I didn't, I didn't know all the things that I'm telling you now, all this, this you know, mindfulness and so on. And when, when I found the channel, it was, it was, 
it was such a relief, as I told you, because it was, you know, I, I started to listen to the videos and I remember watching one video the, with the puppets. One yeah, the right. And one is you, which, which, which is kind of mindfulness because even then you talked about the fact that you are not your brain. You're, you know, uh, one of the things when I got to this guru, I told him, listen, I, I, I said the, the line in English, he goes, I, I, I told him, you know, I started to think about it. And then I tell myself, and I said, just a second, you said in the same line, I and myself, how come there are two, what's going on here? Let's stop right now. You said, I tell myself, or I convince myself, how come I and myself are separated if they're both you? Let's try to understand it. Who is I and who is myself? And this is, you know, one thing that I thought of like two or three days ago is people that have insomnia will tell you one thing. I want to sleep. I want to sleep. I is your ego. I is the ego, right? I is me, is my ego. Want or want to is a will. It's something that your ego wants. If you take your ego down, if, if, if you don't exist in this world, you just accept, you don't have the I, and you take down the will, what is left is sleep, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's a thought I, <laughs> it's a thought I had because, because, because someone that has insomnia, I, listen, I've, I, have it, I had it for two decades. I know how it feels. When you have insomnia, you feel like you deserve the sleep. Like you, it's something that, that you must have, okay? I, I, I did everything. I, I had the camel tea and whatever. I took a shower before that. And I did everything. I deserve to sleep, right? I deserve to sleep. It's something that, uh, that the world owes me. I need to get it back. But, you know, but when you take down the ego, the eye, the eye and you take the will down, so there's nothing, there's the quiet. This is what happens in meditation because you're only accepting. You just, and, and, and then what started to happen to me is like after 10 or 15 minutes of meditating, it's gonna sound funny, but uh, tears are coming out of my eyes because the only thing that I feel is pure love. And you know, when you say I'm in love in someone or I'm mad at someone, both of them, feelings are never out of you, they're in you. You cannot, you cannot love someone, you can be in love, in a state of love. If you're in a state of love, you love everyone. Because love is in you. It's not, uh, what you do is you're, you, um, I don't have the words in English. What you do is, 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 you, is, is you put it on someone else. You just, you know what I mean? You just say, uh, I love you. No, you are in love. If you're mad at someone, he might be having fun with his friend somewhere. You know, so what if you mad at him? You're suffering, he's not. You cannot be mad at him. You're in a state of madness, all right? Or of, of being angry or whatever. If everything that happens is in us, and if you know how this machinery is working, if you understand it, if you're educated, just like with sleep, it's much easier for you because before I, before I found your channel, I had no education about sleep. I mean, all the education that I had about sleep is research, uh, research, research on Google and, you know, listening to doctors that want to send me pills. So they told me you have to sleep for eight hours. And so who's sleeping for eight hours? But my daughter, is, she's five. She's sleeping for, let's say, I don't know, 10, 11 hours. I, I don't remember the lot. Listen, for me to sleep eight hours, I have to be up for three nights. Okay. It's, it's, I mean, it's rare. It might happen once in a few months. But most of the people don't need these eight hours. And, and you always say that, but I'll repeat it again. If you read the research that you have to sleep eight hours and you try to reach these eight hours, you'll get less because, because sleep is not a goal. There is no goal. There is no goal. There is life itself. There is nothing. There is, there is how, how you think and then how you feel. That's it. Okay, your brain don't know how many hours you slept last night. Your emotion, your heart doesn't, the anxiety is because of the thought of how many hours you slept, but it means nothing. It means nothing because if you feel good, if you feel rested, who cares how many hours you slept? You know, you, you leave what, what is happening. <laughs> Absolutely.
and that's that was great and uh i thought there was something else i want to go into there but i think um quotes. let's do it huh the quotes exactly exactly let's do some more quotes and um i know you have a bunch uh, i'll just i'll just read mine and then uh we can do a couple of yours uh so i i just have two and this is one of my second one this is another powerful one so um yeah, exactly. So just a little backdrop is like, so Phil Jackson talks about how he typically when, particularly when they lose an important game, he will always sit down and analyze it, go over it and see what they could have done better, et cetera. So that's a little backdrop here. So this is page 199. In 1994, I was too shaken by our loss to New York in game seven of the Eastern Conference semifinals to study the tape afterwards. And memories of the game haunted me all summer. That was a hard moment for me. For the first time, we had been knocked out of the playoffs in four years. After the buzzer sounded, I headed toward the Knicks bench to shake hands with Pat Riley. By the time I made my way towards the crowd, he was already gone. The whole experience had a bad taste in my mouth. This time, I was determined not to dance away from reality. This was after another loss, but to make it my teacher. Losing as a lens through which you can see yourself more clearly and experience in the blood and the bones the train, transient nature of life. And, you know, what I really wanted to say, like, where this really struck me was the, the fact that the one time where he decided, I'm not going to look at this tape, this loss was too devastating, I'm not going to face it, I'm going to leave it away. Then it haunted him, you know, then it haunted him, it came back for him. And that is the thing, like, when there is this thing you fear, and you decide, I'm not going to face it, I'm going to look away, that's when it gets you. And right. the way I translate this to insomnia is like, you, you so often hear the story of someone who's like, um... I tried this for a while and it helped, but then it didn't help anymore. And then I tried this and it could be like, they could do CBT, they could do this, they could do that. And the problem is they went for kind of safety. They just, oh, it feels good. Now, 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 now forget about it. This feels good. I sleep now, now forget about it. But you haven't faced the fear. You haven't faced the fact that you are afraid of being awake at night and you haven't confronted that and it will always come back and haunt you. But when you face it, when you really honestly look at things and see what they are, that's when you get relief. Exactly. Right. Great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, take it away. All right. Let's let's. Uh, okay. Let's start with uh, page. I think one thirty nine. One hundred and thirty nine. I have the. I read a quote yet, and then. Uh, okay. So, where is it? Okay. He says it's on testing the waters. Anyhow, they played. Okay. Let me just uh, a little bit of preview. They, they, they had a serious playing against the Detroit Pistons, which were very, very aggressive. And he said, my goal in, in 1990-91, the season 1991, was to win the conference title and the home court advantage in the playoffs. We had proved that we could beat the Pistons, the Detroit Pistons, at home, but we didn't have the poise yet to win consistently in their arena. Until that happened, we needed to capture uh, the, uh, the conference title so that we could benefit from the unnerving effect Chicago Stadium, the loudest arena in the NBA, uh, had on visiting teams. And I thought about it um, when people, you know, when I had it, the, the difficulty of sleeping away from home. Because when Chicago Bulls play the Detroit Pistons, it's the same players playing against the same players so if it's in Detroit, I mean, the rules are the same rules. The court is the same court. The refs, you know, maybe changes, but they're all, you know, the rules are the same rules. The players are the same players. The methods of playing basketball are the same methods. You know, you cannot change everything in a day, but still, you know, they needed the home advantage to win when they went away to play in Detroit. It was much harder for them to win. How come? I mean, it's the same players. You still have Jordan and people and Pax, uh, people and Paxson and so on and Cartwright and, and, and the Pistons had uh, back then uh, uh, Dennis Beckham. Rodman that jo joined uh, with the Bulls. Yeah, and all of them. And, and you know, wh why does it matter if you sleep in a hotel room at the other side of the world? I mean, except for time zones, but, but oh, you sleep in your own bed. And uh, even in basketball, it just shows you how when even it's, it, you know, it's the same oxygen in the air, uh, uh, same terms, same rules. Um, it was much easier for them to win home games 
than uh, uh, playing away games. But you know, working on it, the certain, I don't have the quote here, but uh, uh, they started to win away games. This is how you win championships one after the other is to get over it, which means understand that it's the same players and it takes time because it takes time for you to practice the brain that it's the same rule, you know, it's the same rules, same game, same players, same, same thing with sleep. If I take someone with insomnia away from home, he won't sleep for the first, second, third night. And then on the third night, he might fall asleep for four or five hours, whatever. And then the night after, he's going to feel calm because he have an evidence that he, all, that he could sleep away from home. Because this is our brain. We need to teach our brain, okay? We're not our brain. We have to teach our brain and then emotions follow. And this is why, what I liked about it because when, when they play it away, it was harder for them to win at the beginning. And then when they're more mindful, you know, like Jordan once said on the last dance that, uh, that why it was so easy for, them, for him to take shots is because he never remembered the last shot that he missed. Every shot was a new dawn. You know, when you take a shot, the, uh, you know, whatever happened a minute ago, you know what, five seconds ago, doesn't exist anymore. But it takes practice because we're automatically thinking about things instead of living them. Okay, when you take a shot, it's a whole new shot. And so, so this is- uh, That's a good one. It's so, it's so fascinating because I, I can read a passage and I actually don't think about anything related to sleep. And you read the same passage, you think about this home court, away court, sleep. It's, it's amazing. I think this should be probably a whole new type of, uh, of uh, episodes where we kind of like have guests go over a book and quotes and things like that. It's amazing. But uh, yeah, I want to actually, I'll let you do one more quote and then we can maybe round up here. But I wanted to not miss out on talking about the documentary too, like The Last Dance, right? Which the two things I remember so strongly from that was pretty much what you said there, which was like Jordan says, like oh, in passing and doing practice, he's like, he's like, why would I worry if I make a shot or not before I even shot it? He was right. like, yeah, why would I like, why would thoughts about the past shots interfere with this shot it's like yeah, i haven't even taken the shot like it's the same exactly. thing i would sleep like why would okay you haven't slept well for like five years but in reality that has no impact at all on if you're gonna exactly. sleep at night or not it's only thinking about it that does right exactly exactly and the second one was i think it's, it's steve kerr right the the three-pointer guy who said like at some point he said that how he was not a kind of a core player he was kind of a you know came in here and there and he said like I re he realized in retrospect that the problem was that when he was playing that little, he said, I paid, I, I, I paid too much attention to every shot, every shot for me, because I had so few of them. Every shot was like super important for me. That's why I was missing. When I started, when I was kind of like letting go of that importance to every single shot, he did much better Same like same philosophy again. Right. Exactly. Just do what, you know, leave what happens, do what you do and don't think about it. Uh, the whole triangle of offense that they had. Okay, so I have, I have many quotes, but you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll just go through like two or three pretty quick because of the time. Okay, so uh, uh, on, on 142, uh, it's, it says, where is it? 142. Okay, I'll just take the, the last. Okay, if you're not really angry, it says, the players will de detect it immediately. Um, and I wrote, if you're not really sleepy, don't go, don't go into bed and try to sleep. You know, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it reminded me of it because if you're not really angry, the okay, if you're not sleepy, I thought about it. I don't know why it reminded me this one. Um, on 144, it says, uh, we completely disarmed them. I think it was the Pistons or I don't know. Uh, by no, not striking back at the moment, our players became true champions which means when you let go and you do not react to the anxiety, you go back to sleep. You know, this is the good thought. one. Okay, we completely disarmed them, but not striking back. At the moment, our players became true champions. When decided they want to be aggressive, we're going to contain it and play our game. And this is where they got frustrated instead of us which means my insomnia is frustrated for me not paying attention to it. Exactly. 
I think we should, let's actually finish it. And we can maybe do another episode where we talk about more quotes, but this was such a good one, which I didn't talk, think about at all, but it was exactly like that, right? The Pistons, yeah. they were so aggressive. And when the Bulls got back at them and they got aggressive too, that's when they lost. But when the Pistons were aggressive and the Bulls were just like, okay, you can knock me down. I'm up, I'm up. That's exactly, well, that's a good one. Very good one. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Okay. If you want a last one, I have it. But <laughs> okay, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, you know, just, let, let me take the, the, the last one. All right. Last one. Last one. Uh, 158. Uh, whenever a big story develops, I try to laugh it off. Okay, this is a good, a good one. For, I mean, I have more, but this is a good one to finish with. Whenever a big story develops, I try to laugh it off in front of the players to show them that I don't consider what appears in the papers to be very important. And I would say, don't take yourself too seriously, light up, you know, because, because what is life? You know, we're born, we think, we, we, there's so many, the billions of people in the world, you just, people are, are, are busy, uh, you know, make themselves suffer all the time. Forget it, you know, just forget it, forget thoughts, forget it. Just, just be, because, you know, when, when you, for, for example, when you meditate, you are. There's, you are, and that's it. There is nothing after R. Exactly. Just R, just be. So. Wow. Now this is super. I was, I was looking forward to this episode, doing the whole basketball thing. It was, it's awesome. And uh, we should definitely do another episode sometime and, and talk more, Neil. So I, for now, I just want to say thanks so much for coming on and for all the support. I'm sure. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, been a pleasure. We'll do it again. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.